and by the government. So I have some recommendations which I'll offer in the last. First, talking about the status and what is the trend. The status is that as Raksha, Revul Raksha Mantri spoke in the house in Raj Sabha, that in last two years, we exported 3,484.50 crore of defense products. And he clarified, there is, there is, I think there is some important aspect which is, to, which is to be kept in mind. He said, I procured information from four sources. First, from Defense PSU. Second, from DGFT, SCOMET, Special Chemical Organisms, Material Equipment and Technology, controlled by Directorate General of Foreign Trade of Ministry of Commerce. Third, from NOCs. And fourth, from, uh, so I think he had, he had collected from, I think, offset or somewhere, four sources. It means it is not only the items, means this, this figure does not just reflect the items controlled by Ministry of Defense and NOC given to what is called military store. It means all the defense products are covered. So it may appear less, but what today Defense Production Secretary told, that it is 100% rise and that is important, that is significant, even if the number is less. The trend is right. And, and that this is what I really want to celebrate. The confidence, the way we are moving ahead. It is, if you talk in terms of dollars, it is hardly 24, 25 million dollars. And the world market is about 94.5 billion dollars. So it, still it is small, but I say it has got a scope. And when we talk about Indian exports, we always talk in terms of potential, not actuality. Because we have just begun, this is a country, and from the first session we have been talking about that we are the country, and even Mr. Suvatur Prashad also showed in his slide and others mentioned. The country which is known for the world largest market of, uh, of defense products and, the, and considered to be importing between 60 to 70 percent of its items. So it's basically, we are a considered an importing country. And that importing country is thinking of becoming an exporting power. So I think that's why I, I, I consider it very significant. So, and again, if you talk in terms of trends, how are, what are we exporting? Most of the items exported in defense category are because of offset the much maligned offset. And I, I, Mr. Kanodia is quite active, very proactive defense leader. And I was doing a survey of Indian industry, those who are in high tech, and he came down to my office and gave his feedback. And in fact, most of the, I, I asked this question, uh, what are you exporting and why are you exporting and how are you exporting? And most of them answered that we are exporting because of offset obligations. And today we are told that around $8 billion of exports, uh, offset obligations were actualized. So this is a good development. So what is government doing? How is government uh, helping it? First of all, the norm. Norm has been changed. Earlier, we generally considered exporting arms markets, arms bazaar, something very bad. And I remember in the IDSM, Murli ji was giving a talk and someone asked this question. What is the shift? They say this is old Gandhian notion of just preserving peace and if you are selling arms means you are selling something for war. So it is not only selling something for war, you are selling something to secure peace. And that is significant and that is the normative change which has taken place and that we have, must underline. And the second important, if you read uh, government's uh, report, that's a strategy which has been put forward on the web. And it says that we have to, we have to have it just to minimize the scale of economy. And it was reiterated today that you, you, you just cannot afford to have massive R&D or massive manufacturing sector without exporting. If you don't do it, you will have problems. And that's why you lag behind. That's why many of your projects lag behind. So that's why this export is important. And government, apart from 
announcing a strategy, it did several things. One important aspect was the regulatory change. I remember I was speaking in London, and one foreigner asked me the question, what is this military store? And he said that I asked someone, one of the Indian lawyers, to get that definition clear. And when he filed an RTI, the answer came, military store is what we call military store. So this is very simple answer given to the, the foreigner to one supplier. So this, this was the state of affairs of our regulatory mechanisms. There was no clarity. Now at least military store has, got, has been populated with different items. Earlier no one knew what, is, what are defense products. And in fact now also I will come about that later and I have to move fast. So, and even our SCOMET, this category 6 is still unpopulated and that category 6 is supposed to be for military defense products. And we recommended now we are applying or we are going to become a member of Washington Arrangements. Hopefully soon within a month or two or three uh, that category 6 which is uh, de devoted for conventional munitions will be populated. So these are some of the aspects which, uh, some of the steps which our government is taking. Several things have been said in the beginning and I'll just going to say a couple of things. Commodore Mukesh Bhargava is sitting here and today again he made in it in his presentation and when I, when I interviewed him for one of my projects so one of his complaints was that why are you not exporting? And then his answer was, which many, in fact it was not just his answer, many industry people answer, that when we don't get order in our own country, what is our credibility? Others will not take our products seriously. And this is, and that is in, in our strategic studies concept known as bedrock support of your own government, your own client. So this bedrock support now Commodore Bhargava should be, I think, satisfied because today what a government official stored that trend is again increasing. Last two years, in 2014, 15 and 15, 16, around 67% of contracts given are in terms of 64 to 67%, I have data, around 68% in terms of contract given were for Indian vendors. And in terms of value, it is 64%. But today, Defense Production Secretary said that it has, in last nine months, after IDDM category, it is rising to 71%. So we are not, again, we are not satisfied that it should be more than 80%. So this factor is there, but at least industries, this demand has been made. And we are hoping that industry will again look forward to foreign market to sell its products. So this is another issue which I just wanted to highlight. Another very important factor, or you can say important step taken by government is funding, fully funding some important segments of R&D, especially aerospace. And those who survey global market, a global, there are three major areas which we are going to see rise. One is aerospace area sector, one is electronics. And, and then third is defense, certain sectors of defense. So government, and this was generally demand of the industry that at least fully fund that sector. So government in, in an answer to parliament, minister, honorable minister made this statement that we are going to pay special attention to the private sector. We are going to build their capacity. So this is another, another important achievement and important measure taken by the government. And now, so what is the potential? This is what I am going to talk very briefly. Trump has come. People are talking about Trump. So just don't look towards traditional Indian export market that is Middle East or Southeast Asia. Why not target Europe? Because European countries are going to be pressurized to increase their defense budget. And at least they are, some of them have started announcing after Trump, even though he has not even taken over, that we are going to increase it to 2% of their GDP. And they will look towards India. Now you have to market it. If you don't market it, then it's your fault. And plus, we have been talking about having several agreements, several arrangements with United States. And these arrangements, and United States is considered to be another big market, top five markets, UK, India, United States. They are considered, in the, so we have United States, partnership with United States. 
which can also help immensely. Then I just come to the first come to challenges which may be taken up. First is regulatory challenge. Industry's complaint is that DGFT is very slow. It has got archaic laws. And this general complaint, some of the people who had given their comments are sitting here. And quite interestingly, worldwide, the phenomenon is that Ministry of Defense or State Department in the United States is considered to be very tough. And Commerce Ministry, which is supposed to promote business, is considered to be very liberal. So what happens, generally countries want, or basically industry wants, that items which are controlled under Ministry of Defense or say controlled under State Department or Foreign Ministry, which generally are quite known to be very tough, should not control items for export. And it should be controlled by Ministry of Commerce. But in our country, it's opposite the case. Ministry of Defense, after regulatory reforms, after what I say that uh, after announcement of export strategy, came out with several regulatory changes. One of them I told that Military stored means defense production center, whatever you call it, or you, products were defined. And, and companies or applicants are getting their licenses cleared within 15 days. Within 15 days. If there is no objection from five departments, Ministry of, Ministry of uh, External Affairs, DRDO, then some armed forces, and plus intelligence agencies, uh, wherever there is. This is generally, if you are not sending your comments, file will not be pending. It will be cleared. While in Ministry of Commerce, it is just opposite. Very few applications are cleared in, in prescribed time. It takes one month, one year. And this was one of the complaints of the company. Second is like category five of SCOMET which is for aerospace industry. And they say that when we file an application, the, the foreign vendor, OEM, what we call original equipment manufacturer, it knows, ministry knows, but DGFT doesn't know. So when we apply for, so they, again there is delay. And the same supplier, means foreign vendors, is supplying an item to India, but you have to produce your end user certificate. So it is quite complicating. So some of the items, and most importantly, I mean, quite importantly, even UAV, drones, military drones, are controlled in export, uh, in Ministry of Commerce control list. We should be transferred to the uh, minister, uh, Defense Ministry's list. So this will help. So these are, this is one another change which I think the problem which is existing. Third is repeat order. What is the procedure now? Your two year period will start from the, your first order. While it should be the, from the last order, there should be rolling period. And this is, I think this will be quite helpful for industry. Fourth is end user certificate, especially ultimate end user certificate. Suppose you are supplying an item and the person who is, the company which is buying your item doesn't know who, which, will, which will be the ultimate end user because it is buying for business. And a company is asked to s produce end user certificate for that, ultimate end user. So this is a global problem. And the government should sh sit down with other governments and sort it out. Otherwise, many, many companies complain that we could not supply because we could not produce ultimate end user certificate. So this is another regulatory changes which may be brought in. And about time gap, which I have already mentioned, it should be it should be prescribed that within 15 days you have to clear the order, like it is being done for military store. So that should be done. Then institutional innovation. How many? Two, two three minutes. Okay. So institutional or innovation that strategy, defense export strategy has has a provision for defense export promotion board. But it did not materialize. 
and i generally i in my my study which i for which i talk to you i have recommended that there should be defense promotion board or something called interministerial working group secretariat this secretariat may undertake many jobs and which generally a company small msme suppose that is exporting one item one this is uh, getting one license approved every year or in 5 years or two or suppose 10 licenses getting approved it cannot have internal costly internal compliance program the task is to be undertaken by somehow somehow by the government so that part is to be taken care of by the government so that there is compliance it is not that we are advocating there should not be any compliance there is compliance and again another issue the risk management risk they can give give advice to a company which is supplying anything outside what are risk involved so this is another uh, uh recommendation i am giving second is third is about export promotion uh, steering council this is also provided in the export strategy document it has been created but it's it has been created for us for a limited mandate for a limited task that is if there is a dispute uh, in the lower tier like if joint secretary defense production and plus the committee the five com members committee could not resolve the matter or unable to resolve the matter then it will be escalated the matter will be escalated to defense export steering committee but the strategic document has recommended so many jobs so many tasks to for uh, steering committee and one of the task is to do survey of global market which indian industry may not be capable of doing it and and only something which has got better infrastructure better capabilities can do this task so i think that should be strengthened that defense exports steering committee should be strengthened my last uh, recommendations for the government is, will be to do today we talked about different uh, industry this different academic institutions talking about iit is talking about or some academic institution but this is all unclear this is vague and once it is vague then no one is going to just come forward and do any job in human resources management so for that job something from concrete something concrete from government has to come out what are requirements what are the areas what are key areas where we have to develop people you have to give fellowships you will have to create faculty you will have to create courses you will have to create other infrastructure which otherwise it will just be talking points in seminars it will be talked about and you will always complain of human resources problems because of which drdo was is generally accused of i am a great supporter of drdo i generally don't criticize drdo because it has done the job which you could not have ever done you cannot you could not have got ballistic missiles and nuclear weapons from outside that you could have developed only in the country i have worked on export control regimes global export control regimes so i know the difficulties you could not have got anything this surprises and this makes us wonder once we if we can develop agni 5 we can develop so many sophisticated systems strategic systems why are we not getting low value items in our country this and now i at least all industry is coming up and we are going to do the job so so th just again talk coming back on human resources so human resources you talk to defense psus people are sitting here they are saying why we are not working to our capacity because we don't have proper human resources we don't want to increase our capacity we just want to produce eight aircraft or three aircraft because we don't have other other than budgetary problems we don't have human resources so that concrete job is to be done by the government what for industry i will just give three four recommendations for industry as in the morning someone told yeah uh, mr satish reddy very clearly told and this is a global issue and he he articulated the global issue if you are trying to get benefits out of global supply chain you will have to be you will have to produce high tech items and on time you just can't just wait otherwise you'll lose out 
So industry has to prepare for it. It cannot say that, yeah, because of this problem or that problem, we could not produce this. And this is a global problem. And those who do not supply, they lose out. So Indian industry will have also to remember this, this factor, this, this issue. Second is awareness of the market. I talked about DERC, Defense Export, sorry, Steering Committee. But some of the companies, startups and others are quite capable. Can't they survey the market? Can't they? I, I, I recommended that a big companies like Tata should, or LNT should take the lead in even ICP, in trading Indian industry. So in way, knowing about the market and working with different business associations, now we have got there, and many such forums. I think it should be shared, and it will enhance the knowledge base of other smaller companies, SMEs. So this is, I think, it is quite important. Third is aggressive marketing. Fourth is, again, regulatory awareness. And knowing, the last point I am saying, knowing about countries' negative list. Why I am saying this point? If you are caught supplying to, I, I think I know Mr. Kanodia disagrees with me on that point, that if you supply anything to Pakistan, so then you have got uh, at least maneuvering capability to uh, turn the tap off. <laughs> but I, I, generally, if you are, your company is caught supplying to China and Pakistan, or to, for that matter, any country which has got very negative image outside the world, then you will have bad image, and you will suffer. That is what in export control strategy we call it, reputational loss. You are going to have a reputational loss, and I think you should think about just doing reputation, think about avoiding reputational loss, because it, it'll, it'll, you'll, you won't get, gain much, but you will lose a lot by supplying to negative countries. China is, is an emerging market for aerospace, for defense products. So you'll have to be cautious. Government will be cautious because Ministry of External Affairs is going to check it, of course. But from your own side, there should be self-restraint, self-regulation from industry side. So these are some of my thoughts which I wanted to share and some of the recommendations I wanted to make. I know I, I was immensely benefited by many of the industry captains in formulating my thoughts. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Rajiv. Chair, can I give a small talk now? Adhaniya Mullidhar ji, Chair, my fellow speaker. Aaj ka last session or my last speaker hoon. Aaj ke jo session ke do topic thai, ek to tha ecosystem, aur dousra topic tha export. Ajeev has dealt with the export section very exhaustively, so I am not going to touch upon it, except being the moderator, taking the facility of maybe making some comments there. ecosystem ki baat karte hain ecosystem hai kya ek robust supply chain ho to ecosystem hai automotive sector ka example le lijiye sab kuch yahan banta hai aur 15 se 20 saalon mein pehle maruti ke experiment ke baad aaj ye situation hai ki hum hamari gaadi yahi pe banate hain yahi design karte hain sare parts bhi yahi bante hain aur duniya mein export bhi karte hain तो ऐसा नहीं है कि हम कुछ कर नहीं सकते हैं और ऐसा नहीं है कि प्राइवेट सेक्टर को यह करना चाहिए आरएनडी में ज्यादा खर्च करना चाहिए ज्यादा एग्रेसिव मार्केटिंग करनी चाहिए अरे प्राइवेट सेक्टर करेगा क्या हम यहां बात कर रहे हैं डिफेंस सेक्टर की डिफेंस क्या है जब तक पहले इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर क्रिएट नहीं किया करोड़ों रुपए खर्च नहीं किए तब तक तो आप एलिजिबल ही नहीं है बिड करने के लिए फॉरगेट ऑर्डर फॉरगेट रिटर्न तो हम उस कॉम से हैं जो अपना कमिटमेंट ऑलरेडी दिखा चुके हैं यहां पर जो इंडस्ट्री डिफेंस में आज के दिन काम कर रही है 
और जो कभी कर चुकी है ये वो इंडस्ट्री है जिसने अपना कमिटमेंट ऑलरेडी कर चुके हैं देखिए मैं तो एसएमई सेक्टर से हूं तो बड़ी बातें क्या करूं लेकिन एसएमई सेक्टर की कहानी सुन लीजिए पैसे खर्च किए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर क्रिएट किया डीआरडीओ से अप्रूवल लिया डीपीएसयू में रजिस्ट्री किए उन्होंने भी हमारे बड़े जबरदस्त ड्यू डिलीजेंस की डिफेंस लाइसेंस भी मिल गया अब इसके बाद क्या है साढ़े सात ही तो चली गई साढ़े सात साल तक इस सेक्टर में कुछ नहीं हुआ है अब समय बदला है लेकिन उस तरह से नहीं बदला जिस तरह से शायद मैंने पर्सनली सोचा था हो सकता है मैं ज्यादा ऑप्टिमिस्टिक था ऐसा क्यों है 